The United States of America. Hang on a second. I thought this expansion was about the Soviet Union and communism. Well, not in this video anyway. The United States is a nation with too many civilian factories, too many resources, too much manpower. It is a nation that is, quite frankly, invincible if you reach 1940. And you probably wonder why it was such a nightmare to invade. Well, now you know why. A no longer depressed United States is very, very strong. Well, now we have the officer corps. We have the ability to gain a lot of XP. Is it possible that we can unlock the entire officer corps and all the doctrines by 1940, making USA not only brutally broken economically, but also militarily. That's right. Regular, historical. Ooh, off we go. Hey, so how do we make the most of experience? So first of all, we'll take our entire army. We'll make them the National Guard Division because they're very shonky. And then we'll uh, put them right here. You know where all the supply depots are, so we don't have to worry about supply. Alternatively, you can just use the uh, area defense garrison order that's what it used to be called oh yeah and uh, civilian factories america with its civilian factories you're gonna get so many uh, you're gonna hate civilian factories national focus first of all and we are gonna go for the new deal boom so what to expect we're gonna make a chunky meta combat with tank division as the united states of america and it's gonna wreck everyone ready or not economy mechanical engineering and a medium tank off we go one on artillery we don't need fighters we're not gonna make in any planes and aa boom good also trains and also trucks yes there we go and the navy uh, we'll just make some really quick tweaks Ooh, voila. good grab the navy merge it up go exercise off you go and we've got an air force too air force go here g to merge them exercise to level three off you go oh yeah america has politics oh yeah fun all right oils have moved here continuously exercise and we are going to consolidate and they will merge up now and there'll be big chunky divisions when they exercise they'll gain the maximum amount of experience the more strength the divisions are when they're exercising the more experience you will gain having low strength divisions exercising is not a good idea because you'll gain absolutely no xp and you'll be losing loads of equipment through attrition not a good idea wpa that's right more political power so we've got political power now we can go into the office course pop right in there and right now we can hire like a chief of staff or whatever if we go into spirit of the army we have this relief of command we gain 25 percent extra army experience because we're a democracy and army advisors are 50 percent cheaper this is insanely broken and it's also brand new first up it's getting the 35 army experience so what i would advise is hop into modified government and hop on to one of these advisors in this case we'll go for the silent workhorse to gain us more political power and with that we could do a small lobbying effort to gain more support in the house then we can pass all of our delicious bills and politics laws ministers the senate oh these fun mechanics so we are exercising our entire death stack navy right now uh, for approximately three months and we've got 100 naval experience. Uh, Paradox, I thought you were meant to nerf this. So now we have the option to actually go down our naval doctrine. Why? Why? <laughs> what we can do is go to officer cause uh we can go into spirit of the navy and go for naval reforms you saw 100 naval xp in three months was great well now it's going to take less because now we get 50 percent extra naval experience just that easy and while we're at it we might as well get the rest of the officer course so we start with the bureau of ordnance that's right american torpedoes suck so let's not make them suck anymore and my advice is to go for this one night fighting the night attack and night spotting that's pretty cool but the visibility reduction is very very strong it helps for spotting just trust me on that one and then the final one, the Spirit of the Naval Academy. And for the most part, there's none of them that really stick out. We'll go for, go for instilled aggression for plus one attack chance when leveling up. Attack generals for the win. Because we need to be producing some tanks, we need to get the tank upgrades. So in this case, we need to go for armor, we need to go for engine, and we need to go for artillery because we need to add the artillery upgrades on. And our tank will be state of the art. It won't be any cheap, crappy, riveted armored tank. No, no, no. We are going to go for something that is state of the art. No budget tanks today because, well, we're America. We've got the production. We can do this. It is possible. The WPA is done. Now we can do the uh, Agricultural Adjustment Act. If you're not aware of these, you go for all three of these and it gets rid of the Great Depression. No longer depressed. America is great. Medium. Lobbying effort. More lobbying. Oh, oh, politics. So fun. And we can go for the financial expert. That's right. America has the biggest economy in the world, but it still gets 
Advisors that reduce the consumer goods. Why is this even in the game? Oh my god. Anyway, our economy's bigger now, so now we can go even bigger. Go big or go home. Philosophy of manifest destiny. The basic medium chassis is done. And then we can, as I said, you'd get more upgrades and get the basic sorted. So if you want a min-max right now, you could spend some of your political power and go for the theorist for Navy. But honestly, you can have so much naval experience there's no point doing this. There really is no point. That's a waste of naval experience. So uh, start working on your doctrines. That's right. It's 936. There's been no wars. Definitely no naval wars anyway. And we're working on naval doctrine. Yeah. Trade interdiction is the best path for Navy. Uh, the reason why is it's the way spotting works. The amount of spotting you've got and the amount of surface visibility you've got. And guess what? Under trade interdiction, surface visibility is reduced for most of the ships. See that? Surface detection plus 10% and surface visibility minus 10%. Those are crucial for spotting. Trust me, trade addiction is the best path. Trust me. You have to wait 230 days in between each one of these when you pass them. So next up, research. So we're getting army experience now. You can see it ticking up, very gradually ticking up. Not a ma massive amount, but over time it will gradually accelerate more and more and more. It's not a lot of experience. It's not really worth the cost. But remember, you're America. You've got lots of production. You can afford it. And in that case, we might as well train a few more divisions. We'll train three more and then immediately just attach them on straight away onto these guys who are training on this fallback line. Senator speaks out against the government's policy. Policy of science and research development? But who regulates the regulators, Dave? Get out. And then just drop them off immediately. As long as you're making your army very gradually bigger over time, you'll be getting enough XP to worth it. So in this case, just make it a little bit bigger. Don't push yourself too much. This will do just fine. I continuously want to do lobbying efforts because otherwise you're not able to pass your legislation, which will slow you down. I'll admit, a lot of the focuses for America are a bit hit and miss. Some of them you don't even need. Like, for instance, making fires cheaper, you're already going to have like a billion military factories. So what's the point? But there is one down here that is very spicy and its main battle tanks makes medium and light tanks are 10% cheaper. That's very hot. And also, we have women in the workforce. Based! So, let's go down that path. Election of 1936. Oh, Americans, only two choices. <laughs> two choices? Uh, I can relate to that, sadly. More. The arsenal of democracy gaining us an absolute crap ton of army experience. Oh, and you know what we're going to do with that army experience, don't you? You do. All right, so building slots, very important in America. Uh, tank upgrades, tank upgrades, tank upgrades. Funneling of tank upgrades. Arsenal of democracy. And then we can also be less depressed with the Fair Labor Standards Act. So, let's get the ball rolling. Officer course. Let's go for the spirit of the army and then go for relief of command. Now, all advisors are 50% cheaper. Boom. So, let's just go ham. First of all, army offense. Next up, infantry expert. And we don't have enough command power to assign anymore. Cocked by command power. More. There is two ways to get more command power as America. So if you hop into your national focuses, if you look under Pentagon, so you've got War Department, Pentagon, you can see here, Department of Defense gains more command power daily. So that's one thing you can do. Alternatively, you might not know about this. This is a secret. <sighs> Don't tell anyone. You look under Doctrines and under Grand Battle Plan, the second one, you see that? Grand Battle Plan, Max Planning plus 10% and also 0 0.25 command power per day. That's a secret. They added that in. They sneaked that one in, didn't they? A very small buff for Grand Battle Plan, but we're not going to be doing Grand Battle Plan. Mobile Warfare for the win. So now all of our research now are off for tank upgrades. Every single one of them. All of them. Also, something I didn't spot, Intervention in Europe also gives extra command power modifier as well. So something nice to know. I don't think there's any reason to go for any of these, by the way. You do get enough command power, even though you can apply the advisor just maybe a little bit slowly and a little bit late. So I don't think it's worth it. All right, another 20 command power. Time for another high command and we will go for logistics which gives us more ticking army experience. So there is more of a reason now to go for these high command guys early for the reward of how much army experience you get. Trust me, it's worth it. Don't forget about armored cars and also don't forget about mechanized. We will go for those soon. First tank, let's get it. Medium chasse, we'll go auto design and see what we get. So we get improved small cannon, two man turret, nah, that won't do. Three man, sloped armor, hmm, pretty good. Not too fussed about the speed early on, uh, but lots of armor would be useful. Radio, of course, radio. Wet ammunition storage, the extra reliability. And with a diesel engine, that's our uh, 
85 reliability. Make you go a little bit faster. 70 reliability. I think this is decent. It's very heavily armored for a 1938 tank, but eh, whatever. We're going to make quality tanks, okay? No rubbish ones here, guys. Only the best of the best. And uh, put that there. Put that there. Let's start producing our tank. It does need chromium, though. Oh, God, here we go. Turkey, you have one job in this entire war. Supply me with chromium. Main battle tanks. Don't mess around. Go for it. And then start working on your medium two to get the bonus. The Federal Housing Act. We are no longer depressed. Well, in 70 days anyway. Time to make a division. We'll start with this one. So, the new combat width. What is it? If you want the full breakdown of the meta of the new combat width, check out the video on my second channel. Click on the eye in the top right now. Regardless, uh, we need motorized anti-air. Two lots of that. We're not making an air force, so we need to make up for it. And we're also going to make... Uh, mediums loads of mediums so we convert all these to mediums and we'll fill out the rest with cavalry just because we're not gonna have enough motorized to begin with voila magnificent oh a lovely sherman too that looks great that is my new boy 100 xp wow that's expensive and we'll train four of those at the same time too we can add on all the support companies so we're gonna go for armored car recon logistics maintenance uh, we will get flamethrowers on this, but for the time being, we'll just leave that blank. Uh, we'll go for the refugees and also the worker conditions. It is 9.39. Not a single gun has been fired. Well, let's see anyway. And we've completed our naval doctrine. Ah, America! The true rulers of the trade interdiction doctrine. The most historical game. Medium 2 done. Hey! Medium 3. Yes. Spirit of the Academy. Bold attack. War. It never changes. All right, we've got Engineer 2 now, so we can make a Flamer tank. So we'll grab uh, one of the light tanks. This one will do. And uh, we'll make it a Flamer. Make it three-man turret. To be honest, a lot of this doesn't really matter when it comes down to a Flamer tank. You can make it really, really cheap, and then you get the bonuses of attacking different terrain types. So in all fairness, there's not really a lot of point. Let's just go for something that's seven mile an hour. Something like that. And a welded armor. And just a classic suspension. And what we want to do is later on, if we need more speed, because this tank will slow all the other tanks down, is what we can do is... It. But for the time being, that's actually great. Flame on. Oh, no, wait. Hang on. One thing I missed. You have to say it's a flame tank. There you go. Flame boys. Only two military factories will be enough. Off you go. And slap it on. Time to go for the Great Lakes and finally get off undisturbed isolation. Waken the sleeping giant. Oh, yeah. And also more. Okay, we don't need to exercise our arm anymore. It's given us enough XP, but we need to focus primarily now on our tanks. Loads of tanks. Hansa leader. More. All right, decisions now to help out the Brits. Game war support, blah, 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 blah. Send attache to China. I need to improve, improve relations first. Boom. Off you go. And we can hop on to partial mobilization. Unleash the civilian factories. Oh my goodness, so many civilian factories. And then we can start mass producing mills now. Loads of mills. Just add them to the bottom of the queue. Perfect. Lend lease to China. Japan's going to be our thorn in our side and we don't want to deal with it. So let's hope China takes care of most of the dirty work. These focuses are useful because they give army experience. 10 here and then 50 here. Once you've got these, then you can start rushing your doctrines. Oh, and we will. We will. Rolling those medium tanks off the assembly line. More, more, more. So now our economy's working up. You're going to need lots of building slots. So my advice is to run rush, disperse our concentrated industry so you can keep up with the production. Otherwise, you'll have nowhere to build and that'll be a problem. So, uh, more. And we're not building in Florida because nobody likes Florida. Let's even pretend it's not even there. There we go. Problem solved. Now we're low on lots of resources. We're going to have to do a combination of a few things. We need to do excavations. Uh, we need to improve infrastructure for more resources. We might have to think about coming off war economy, but that's a last resort. And a little bit of mechanized. Now we desperately need rubber. Help us out, Britain. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do we have here? Landing craft. Hmm, pretty standard, right? Oh, well, what do we have here? Now we've got some excavation tech. We can start mining more materials. So steel. Enough messing around. Let's make the perfect tank. So so, diesel, welded, interweave road wheels for breakthrough. Medium, improved howitzer, flight, three-man turret, advanced radio, armor skirts, sloped armor, and easy maintenance, which is free. Do you know that? No production cost for this. Easy. And then we add loads of armor on. Oh. So much armor. 17 armor. Be more speed now. Four kilometers per hour. That is a beast. Now, we might upgrade this later on to add a bit more speed onto it. But for now, this is a pretty scary beast. Boom. Oh, my goodness. I really don't like that image, though. Let's try a different one. Oh, look at that. Oh, that looks amazing. And then, boom. Start producing that baby. And it requires an incredible amount of production. <sighs> 
an insane level of production. Ah, Soviet Union, my great friend and ally for a long period. And Turkey too. Look at that tank. It feels almost like the barrel of the tank is longer than the actual vehicle. I feel like it'll just fall over if it takes a shot. What do we have here? Floating harbor. Don't mind if I do. Here we are, the 10 boys, ready for an adventure. First thing to do is ask for access. Now we'll just join the allies. And then uh, let's go for a trip to Africa. We'll not declare war because we don't want our tank to get intercepted. Then we get to arrive in Africa and have free reign. Yay. Mm, mechanized. Well, some mechanized. Oh yeah, and doctrine. Do you think I forgot about doctrine? I didn't forget about doctrine. So make sure you go for pattern, which reduces the cost of mobile warfare by 15%. Mobile warfare America, the best of the the best and here we go one two three four five we got five okay we got halfway <laughs> <laughs> That'll be finished in no time. Oh, smoke and fire has been replaced with maneuver warfare because I've gone for mobile warfare. Well, what do you know? I didn't know that. It's doctrine specific. With regret, I'm going to go for spies. I really don't like using spies. Oh, man. The micromanagement is not fun. But it's got to be done because otherwise I'll have an intel advantage and it'll just be pain because I'll not be winning battles. So it's got to be done. Anywho, break off the submarines. New theater. New general. Split them. And convoy raid everywhere. Wrap around Africa. There we go. Off you go. Split off automatically and reinforce automatically. And all new submarines can go into the theater too. There we go. And send the mega fleet to Britain, Northern Ireland. Japan has declared war on the Philippines. And uh, honestly, hand on heart, I'm not really going to do much about it. You know what? For now, Japan, you can have this. We'll take care of you later. Uh, exploit time. Do you know how to get supply into Africa really easily? Uh, build a bunch of ports. Now, they've increased the cost for ports, but it's a lot cheaper than the 20k for a supply hub. So just build a few of these. Trust me, you'll be fine. Blitzkrieg. American Blitzkrieg. Join wars. The German-British war. Good old British-German conflict. Nice, right? Now, mm, I think what we'll do is just wait for the, the ports to complete, and then we'll move forward. The embargo begins. Barbarossa. Never mind, this is already going to be over before it even begins. Wrap around. There's me building railway lines in Africa and ports. Humanitarian work by the Americans. Oh my god, and we just chew through the front line. No resistance at all. Oh gee, that was easy. Tobruk, though, on the other hand. Classic fortress. Historical game. Can we break it? And by the looks of things, yeah, they're losing too many troops. So, uh, yeah, you can hold it and defend temporarily. Uh, but unfortunately, in the long run, your divisions are going to get encircled. Rip. Done. Get out. Okay, this is not even a con. Says the supply is horrendous. Uh, we just keep pushing forward because we've got so much firepower. Supply status, 0%. Meanwhile, uh, winning all battles. Even with the maximum penalty applied for low supply, minus 70% breakthrough and minus 20% attack, uh, there's still a little firepower left over to keep pushing. These tank divisions are insane. Okay, we've reached the absolute extent of our supply lines right now because we can't break Tripoli and everything is super low org. So we're going to have to build a port here and a railway line to it. Fully mechanized. Oh, the counterattack is strong. And oh my goodness, this low supply is oh, really painful. We burnt a load of mechanized just with attrition. So it looks like when the low supply are low fuel or a combination of the two, they take a massive penalty to the reinforce too. Because look, they're missing a lot of equipment. Oof. All right, port has been built. Still low supply, but nowhere near as low supply as it once was before. And then the counterattack begins <laughs> practically immediately. Okay, just grab Tripoli. Oh, there we go. Just just choose to them. When they're in supply, just choose to them. And rip Italy. Camper froppen. Fr 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 Medium frappe. Actually, what would the German equivalent of this be? Doesn't matter, we got it. Naval invasion order with floating harbor support. Ooh, don't mind if I do. More resources. More. Here's something they changed in No Step Back. Mechanized equipment can now be modified. Wow, amazing, right? Don't get too excited. But, oh, what is this? Production cost? I can make my mechanized half price. How awesome is that? Invade the Italy. Off you go. Okay, we need naval support. So we're going to have to move you guys to here and get naval supremacy. And strike force right here. Is that enough? And strike force here too. There we go. It starts... Penalty to naval invasion, 99%. 
So we need a few guys to land so we can like flank. So you guys are gonna go here, you guys are gonna go here, and you go here, you go here, and then you go here. There we go, spread them out. The minute they engage in combat, they do insane damage and then filter through so we can grab the straight on the other side. Sicily, invasion, success. Wow, actually, that, that actually blew me away how well that went. My goodness, this is a knife through butter. The only thing that's slowing me down is having to modify the railway lines. But even then, the supply isn't that bad. It's not Africa, put it that way. This is the American Blitzkrieg. Oh, can we get in circle, but in the center? That would be amazing. Oh, we got it! <laughs> Mussolini is like sweating right now. His entire nation has fallen in a week. <laughs> the modern... American Blitzkrieg. It has been trialed in the field, and now it is a reality. There we go. Italy. Explosion. We're not actually at war with Vichy France, so... <laughs> it's a neutral border in the West. Hmm. Max out those railway lines in the Alps, and, uh, well, just build them up. Max supply in Italy. I can't get over the, like, fighting in the mountains here. They're doing all right. Deep snow in the mountains. <laughs> and we're winning. <laughs> we're winning. <laughs> Oh my goodness. If you build tanks just right, they're insanely strong. So just popping mountains here. Tanks in the mountains. That's the natural habitat of the tank. The more you know. More. More. So, three ways you can improve supply in an area that has bad supply. Number one, find the supply depot and follow it back to the port. In this case, this port. In this case, it's already maxed out, so there's no point. Next up, you can build the railways up to level five. They're up to level five, so that's totally fine. And finally, last but definitely not least, why don't you max out the infrastructure, which will improve the local supply just within that specific region. And of course, don't forget, Logistics Wizard. And also, don't forget, Logistics Companies. Just stack them. Time to take this one step beyond cast armor and a little bit more engine to bring it up to six kilometers an hour oh we're getting big we're getting beefy we're also getting a little bit unreliable but you know what we've got the production if a few break down eh no big deal need to get a tank that looks chunky what looks chunky that one looks pretty good chunky boom produce those the introduction of mac and cheese and hamburgers to italy um has not gone down well 18 44 combat worth, mostly modern up-to-date tanks on the border of the Alps. Max spy network. Oh, I really want to try. Should I go? Should I try it? Should I go? Of course. Boom. Oh, and the allies use this as an opportunity to attack as well. And yep, as I thought, it's a bit of a slow grind, but we're actually breaking troops on the Alps. Britain's brought along its railway guns. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Can you imagine the procedure of moving a railway gun from the UK through the Mediterranean <laughs> to the Alps? I can't, I, I can't even get my mind around that. Okay, time for Stupid Strategies 101. Uh, let's buy, let's build four supply dumps on the front line <laughs> of Germany. Let's see what happens. Here we go, boys. Uh, four more supply dumps. <laughs> and significantly more supply. Let's take it one step further. War plan black, extra 10% attack against Germany. Go. Okay. Um, I think most of the divisions are either planning for a D-Day that's never gonna happen or in the East. Triple front, too strong. Make an investment in the German economy. Thank me later, Germany. <laughs> ah, the American Blitzkrieg. It is very wide. No narrow corridors, no snaking. Just a, well, I guess a massive highway. And I would also like to thank our Commonwealth allies for holding the front line uh, while we make big chunks or take big chunks out of the German front line. I guess we can go aggressive now, actually. Oh, God, just chewing through them. So if you're wondering why this is such a strange shape, I was avoiding the Maginot and the West Wall here and also avoiding the Sudeten here as well. So what you kind of have to do is sweep through the top and sweep through the bottom to take Vienna and then practically call Pichulation. <laughs> This one American tank just plowing forward by himself. I am speed. Here's a single tank taking on a level seven fort. It's like there's not even a fort there. Rip. The end. And the future America will feast upon fantastic uh, pasta and pizza and sausage um, and s stew. And I actually don't know any Czech foods. Sorry. Europe done. Whoop. What area of the Pacific shall we convoy raid? Uh, all of it. The raiding begins. I spy with my little eye something beginning with H. Oh no, the trident of Poseidon. Japan wrecked. Japanese fuel, zero. Wow, the most historical game. Oh no. All right, first step, cut the country in half, completely annihilate their supply, and then swoop up and take the rest of the West. I don't think they're gonna be able to hold on for very long. All right, chopped in half, first objective achieved, and we can isolate the North now. 
and then press the south. In all honesty, I think we might be able to rush the victory points. Yeah, it's looking that way. Go, go, go. Yep, I think all of the divisions are on the mainland fighting the Chinese. Yep, they are. And the Raj. And uh, they can't break the divisions back from the mainland. It's because I've got so many submarines convoy raiding them. And that's a rip. Time for some American sushi. California rolls for everyone. And also ramen of every single kind. Every single kind. Never mind. I guess it's just the sushi. Rip. Current wars. None. We have peace in our time. Appeasement with this. And also this is the best timeline because America gets the best food. GG.